Hi guys, it's Fiverr, and today we're painting some 90s inspired pizza orcs. I think a lot of people have nostalgia for Warhammer, but I didn't grow up with it, so I don't. But um, I'd been watching a lot of videos of people doing retro unboxings and stuff like that, and I do wish that I had known about it earlier and been in the hobby from the start. So um, thinking about like Age of Sigmar being in the past and stuff like that, um, even old Blood Bowl models, you can see that people were drawing on things that had been a part of their childhood. So I thought I would do the same um, and make some nostalgic orcs. Uh, these are going to be 90s orcs. And the main reason I've done this is because uh, there used to be a movie theater that I love to go to and it was full of all the trashy, horrible design choices of my childhood. Um, it had neon all over the walls, it had this funky pattern on the carpet. I would love to have the carpet of my house look the same. How weird as that would be. But uh, when I went back a while ago, they had completely remodeled it. And it looks like this now. Uh, yeah, so um, in an ode to all those things that you can't get back. Things that are just faded, like old theme park attractions and clothes that have gone out of style or just lost footage from films. Stuff you really can't get back. I started with an orange paint. I'll put all the official names in the description, but basically I was just looking for something that was the color of the dust that comes off on your fingers when you're eating extreme cheddar goldfish. Uh, and yeah, I was able to find that color pretty easily. Looks like Tau Ochre Orange is uh, a good a good match for that. Um, so that goes on all over the skin. Um, as you can see, um, a heathen, I paint straight from the pot. I don't thin my paints. And if something is watery or not right, I just... Uh, one thick coat, really. Don't wait for that to dry. Just slop it on. It's the same mentality that any uh, entertainment child's facility would have during the era that I grew up. So yeah, uh, no shame. Uh, so you do want to take a tan bone color and just kind of go ahead and paint in all the bone, um, tan kind of armor parts. That's going to be our base coat for the cup pattern. Uh, pretty much the only thing that gets to be tan is his armor plate and then his little masky thingamabob. And then after that, you're going to want to dig through your paint collection and find the closest teal that you can to the cup design. Um, I was able to find one by Army Painter, which was pretty close, so that was cool. Um, and you're basically trying to think of this as painting one half of the uniform because we want to balance the teal and purple in this. So you're going to paint one shoulder pad, one of the horns on his helmet, both of his shoes, both of his gloves, half of his little crotch plate thing. I don't know what it is. I don't play football or rugby or whatever sport, um, but that thingy, and then half of his pants as well. Um, and once you're done that, uh, go ahead and grab your purple. Doesn't matter if it's a watery or thin consistency, just get that and, um, go ahead and start painting as many coats really all at once as it takes for that to uh, thicken and stay over your zenithal undercoat. Um, you're going to paint the opposite shoulder pad, any opposite spikes or little helmets, the other half of his crotch plate. Uh, don't forget his little orc butt for half of his pants. You're going to find pink because pink was just put along with purple and teal in any good old uh, unmodified Taco Bell. You can find those colors still lingering. It's great, good palette. Don't know why it would ever, ever faded from style. Uh, but just go ahead and paint all the leather things pink. Um, you want like a light pink, uh, kind of like a baby pink. 
Uh, and then just any, oh, and don't forget his belt. You want to paint that pink too. And then uh, grab some silver metallic. I use Silver Fox by Turbo Dork. Uh, they're really great super saturated metallics. You're going to go ahead and paint any of the little buckles, um, the little weird mouth teeth thingy that he has on the front of his helmet, um, and all of, all of his little jewelries and embellishments and things like that. Um, and by this point, you should have a somewhat decent base coat, but realize that it doesn't really emulate the cup design that you were going for, so it's time to, uh, to do a bit of freehand on the uh, armor. So go ahead and grab your teal again. Now with this pattern, it's really not as hard as it looks to emulate. Um, basically, the pattern is abstract brush strokes, so you can just make abstract brush strokes and it's going to look pretty good. Um, I just kind of used the I thought of triangles basically or like mountains just trying to get that basic silhouette done um you want the teal to be pretty thick and you can see I've got a fair amount on my brush to kind of try and make it messy and you just kind of zigzag it on there as best you can uh it's not an exact science but you, you get the you get the idea um you're gonna do that and then wait for it to, to dry just a little bit before going in with a thinner brush and some of the purple and kind of not exactly trying to do the opposite, but where the teal part points up, you want to make the purple kind of point down, but always kind of keep the purple inside the teal lines. It explains itself better visually than me explaining it with words. Um, but basically just try and keep the purple inside the teal, but don't make it look like the, the purple and teal are pointing the same direction. Um, be sure to reference the, the picture of what you're trying to paint because that always helps a lot. just gonna highlight with a mix of the orange that you used and like a bright yellow color um, to kind of get it a more cheesy look because um, it doesn't look much like pizza just yet but we're gonna get there so go ahead and highlight that with your uh, cheesier color um, and then let that that dry for just a second before you grab uh, brown, I'm using scrag brown, um, and start dabbling in some uh, pepperoni shapes, because we got to make sure people know he's made out of pizza. Um, they're they're going to look a little weird. Just sort of dab them wherever, it doesn't matter. We've all seen a cartoon pizza before, um, so just just do your best. It, I'm, like, if you want to put, just put them wherever you think pepperoni should go. Uh, ideally, there'd be pineapple on this pizza too. I'm I'm in the the pineapple fans. Let me let me know if that makes me even more of a heathen than not cleaning mold lines and painting directly from the pot. Uh, but I love pineapple on pizza. But we're going for a bowling alley orc, and that is, comes in two flavors, which is cardboard cheese or cardboard pepperoni. So you pick and you like it, uh, and you don't complain because you're a kid in the '90s and it's your weird friend's birthday and you've got to go to their party and yeah so um pepperonis and then once you're done putting the dots randomly everywhere um go back with a red and just sort of dot in that over the various pepperonis that you made um just make like three little red dots inside of each bigger brown dot and that'll kind of give you that sort of 
I don't marbled, splotchy, mottled look that pepperonis have. I don't know how to describe lunch meats, but you get the idea. Um, it, it'll add more detail and it'll look better. So then you just want to go through and do some highlighting now that you've finished. Um, so just find like the closest approximation to whatever color would be lighter or mix some white in with the colors that you used. Um, and you can just go through. I didn't head, edge highlight every little detail because uh, ain't nobody got time for that. I wanted to get these done and looking cool. And I don't like to take forever to paint my miniatures. Uh, so just go for it. You know, a little bit here and there goes a long way. Don't forget to highlight the orc butts though. That's a very important step. Um, I don't have a recording for it because my camera was super fuzzy and this is the first time I've tried to make a halfway decent video. Literally was using a uh, tea tin for a tripod, so we're pretty high tech here. But uh, also take like a, a hot pink and just go line the um, pink straps that you painted. Pretty much just try and keep it in the middle and then keep the lighter pink to the sides and that'll basically look like you edge highlighted the leather strap without having to do any of the work of edge highlighting. Uh, life hack right there. And once you're done with the highlights, uh, the only thing you have left to do is give your orc a wash. So just go ahead and wash everything with uh, my favorite wash. Uh, I just slather it on like barbecue sauce on a rib man. Seraphim Sibia goes on everything but in this case try to keep it only on the pizza parts if it gets somewhere else it doesn't really matter um like i said the owner of the bowling alley that would have produced these orcs is not going to go back and check his work for mistakes we are getting these done getting them game ready that's the goal um and they'll still look pretty good even if they're a little weird they're already weird they're 90s orcs nobody cares uh once you're finished uh applying barbecue sauce to your pizza, go ahead and grab everybody's favorite Nulm oil and put that just a little bit on the gloves, a little bit on the pants, and then um, his face mask thingy, anything that's metal, also get some Nulm oil. Try not to get it all over his chest plate though, because that's going to look um, weird and it's going to mess up all that freehand that we did. And now the only thing left to do is... Uh, snap them off as temporary base, get them on a good one, apply any of the Blood Bowl decals that you might have lying around. Uh, We're gonna make him number five uh, for obvious reasons and then give him a little label on his base. And then he is all ready to go. Here is the final orc. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, do the YouTube like, comment, subscribe thing. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.